All right, let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you for this day. Uh, Lord, as we, um, uh, Lord, are in the midst of week without walls, we just pray, Lord, that you would uh, uh, keep our hearts just centered on you. Let us serve well. And uh, Lord, let us lead these teams of students well. And uh, Lord, I know that it is a, a different kind of toil that, uh, that Week Without Walls has uh, upon each of us. In some ways, uh, it's easier. In some ways, it's much harder than a regular week. But certainly, Lord, there is, uh, there is a toil to, to this week as we serve. Uh, and we just ask, Lord, that you give us strength uh, and that you help us to, to do it well. We love you and we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Um, we're going to we're going to be talking uh, over the next over the course of the next uh, couple of months on this. So, so just like this. All right. Two mics. We're going YouTube and Facebook live. So we need two mics for dual feeds. Our audience is just that big, friends. It's just that big. So um, worldwide. All right. Um, so we're going to be talking about uh, our need for direction. How many of you have ever uh, needed God's direction in your life? A few of you, maybe one or two of you, right? I think all of us, all of us uh, are, have not only been there, but probably all of us are there on a daily basis, right? We, we can't do this thing called life without His direction. And we've all been in those seasons where it feels like there is an absence of, of clarity uh, for us. And we know how frustrating that, that can be when there's, when there's like no clarity of direction uh, in, in our lives. And the good news for us is, is that the Bible, the Bible speaks over and over and over and over again about this idea of God wanting to provide direction for our for our lives. Uh, and, and so I, I believe that there uh, are a lot, a lot of little principles scattered throughout the word that uh, that can help us, uh, that can help us to, to find, know or be obedient to God's God's direction. And, and, and this isn't always an easy task. And like so many of the things that we we will talk about uh, are, are easy principles to find, but not as easy principles to live out. Right. But uh, but it's important that we are reminded of them and maybe in times when we're lacking clarity, we can find ourselves being drawn back to one of these principles uh, that, that, that might help us. So I pray that this, uh, in some way, this CEU adds value to your life, whether it be in the here and now or at some, some time to come. Uh, I thought Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 would just be a great, uh, great sort of theme verse for us. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, uh, acknowledge Him or submit to Him and He will make your path straight or He will give you direction. He will lead you, right? He will, he will make sure that you're headed in the right, right way. Um, I remember, I remember a, a few years ago, we were on our way back from uh, Memphis to Nashville, which is about uh, a three and a half hour drive. So for some people, four. For me, uh, I would always challenge myself to make it in two hours and 45 minutes or better. Uh, I, yeah, it just, it's a, it's a gift. Um, uh, literally, I would like set the clock and I would always want to beat my time from the from the trip before. Not good. Not good idea. <clears throat> Uh, I'm being judged right now. That's that's okay. If you could see the records I set, you would be impressed too. All right. Um, uh, but uh, th there was this one time where where uh, about an hour out of Nashville. So so uh, about two thirds of the way uh, of this trip, we ran into gridlock on on the interstate, uh, which is 
our equivalent to the toll road out here, right? So that's just the way we, we travel from Memphis to Nashville and it was just gridlock. I mean, traffic was not moving. Uh, people were out of their cars talking. Um, we didn't have street vendors selling us food, but I, I, I think a guy a few cars up had taken his barbecue grill off the back of his RV and was cranking it up because it, you could tell we were gonna be there for a while. And um, we looked at the, at the GPS and we could see that if we cut across the, 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 the median in the, in the center of the road and got in the, in the lanes going the other direction, we could go back one exit and maybe we could find a way around that. And so I, I did that um, and, and get off of the exit going in the other direction and make a right turn and sort of following the path of the, the interstate so you could see it. And then we turn left and you lose sight of the, the interstate. And then this, this four lane road turns into a two lane road and we're going for a little while. And all of a sudden this two lane road runs into a gravel road. Uh, which is a dirt road, right? And, and, but the GPS is still saying, if you stay on this road, you're gonna get to where you need to be. Um, it, didn't, it didn't feel like a good plan, but I'm always up for an adventure. And for me, I don't, I don't know how you are, but for me, if I'm moving, it feels better than just sitting there in traffic, right? So I'm like, you know what? Let's do it, right? So I feel like that, uh, what's the worst that could could happen? This this guy who owns this land we're about to go on could bring a shotgun out, and he, I don't know. We I don't know what could happen, but we're gonna try it. And so so we're on this this gravel road going through somebody's property, and it even gets it even gets smaller. And then we have we have somebody from apparently the same traffic jam that starts following us, <laughs> and and I, I'm like. Oh my goodness, we, we have someone that, that has followed us out here. We could die. Like, you know, it goes from if this guy, like you see these movies where they come and they ram you from behind, knock you off the road, then they rob you and kill you. And I'm thinking, this could happen. You know, and we're on this small dirt road and we are weaving through some, some just like crazy places. And it, and it does feel like this road's going to end. But on the GPS, it says that if we'll keep going, we're going to get there. And so we stay with it. We stay with it for about 30 minutes. And, and Finally, we go through this little patch of grass and then we come out onto another road, <laughs> right? And, and, and it, it actually leads us, it actually leads us to another major road, uh, make a right turn and there's an exit that is just beyond where the traffic is. So we can look back and we can see all this gridlock traffic, but we get on the interstate and there's like no cars. So like we could make up for lost time was what I felt that was saying to me. <laughs> But but here's the reality of that, like never in my wildest imagination would I have thought that 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 path we were taking was a good idea. But because I had this GPS that kept saying, if you keep going this way, you're going to get there. If you keep going this way, you're going to get there. And and I we, we just felt if we trust this. If we trust this, it's it's going to it's going to get us to where we need to be. The same can be with our with our walk with God. Right. He has given us the word. Uh, he, he has given us his word. And, and sometimes as we're traveling through life, it just doesn't feel like this can't be right. Like, God, you can't allow me to be going through this. Right. This set of circumstances just doesn't feel like it is ideal. It doesn't feel like it's going to lead to the right to the right place. But if we will trust his word, like if we will trust his word and we will trust him, um, he will make our path straight. Like we're going to get there. We're going to get to where he wants us to be, but we got to stay on the path. We got to keep our eyes on him. We got to keep our heart in, in his, in his word. Um, there's a lot of principles in the word that talk about this idea of God giving us the direction as we navigate through the difficulties of life. And today we're going to talk about, um, the principle of integrity, of integrity 
integrity because the Bible speaks so much about this and it speaks of how important it is for each of us as we are seeking out God's guidance or as we are needing him to guide us along life's way. Um, so the first first thought, first fill in the blank there. Because uh, I know those are important to you. Uh, who you are or who we are matters more than what we do. All right. Who you are matters more than what you do. Uh, Proverbs 11, 3 says the integrity of the upright guides them, but the faith unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. It's sort of tragic, isn't it, that we that we live in this world where where people are shocked by integrity and not by dishonesty in these days, right? Uh, so, so it's sort of the norm in, in athletics. We don't even think anything about it anymore when someone is suspended for using some performance enhancing drug, right? It's just sort of the norm. It's, it's, it's what athletes do. So they're suspended for a few games and then they're back. And, and it used to be this great big deal, but now we don't even think much about it. Athletes are constantly looking for ways to, to cheat and to, to get ahead. Uh, politicians, it, 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 it's just sort of assumed by them or about them. Uh, and pastors with moral failures, best friends who, who betray us. Um, we just we live in a world where where uh, integrity is not always on on great display. It's sort of a forgotten virtue in our society. But the Bible clearly says that we should strive for integrity in our life. And so when we speak about integrity, uh, you've heard many definitions of integrity. Let's just have this one as a, as a working definition and for you to fill in your blanks. When your behavior matches your beliefs, when your behavior matches your uh, beliefs, what when what is displayed on the outside is the same that exists on on the inside. Um, so let's let's quickly move through uh, some of some of these uh, points about integrity, some of the things that the Bible teaches us uh, about in integrity. First, let me just give you a few benefits of walking with integrity. Um, when you walk with integrity, you can walk closely with God. Uh, Isaiah 59 two says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Why, why is this important? Uh, have you ever been lost or turned around in a, in a, in a driving situation? Yeah, it's, it's always nice, right? So you've heard sort of misery loves company. It's, it's always sort of nice when someone is there with you, right? Uh, it's, it's nice when you can drive and someone else can say, hey, I'm looking at the map here. Uh, you need to turn left. You need to turn right. And you're not having to pull over every five minutes and then like scroll through GPS. Okay, up here, I need to do this. Or if you're like some people, you drive with your knee and you, you <laughs> no, not good. All right. <laughs> not on your motorbike, right? Not on your motorbike. Um, but, but it's important. Uh, when, when we, when we have integrity, we have to walk with, we, we walk closely with God and, uh, the absence of integrity, the Bible lets us know there's a separation between us and God. And, and no matter what life throws at us, we can be guaranteed this, that, um, we are better if we have, if we have God right there by our side. I love that, that poem footprints that talks about God carrying us when life was at its worst, right? Uh, we can't really have that if we don't walk with integrity because our sins make a separation between us and God. Um, Secondly, you have a built-in guide. Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light unto my, unto my path. We sort of have that built in GPS system when we're, when we're walking in integrity. And my, my former pastor, uh, used to say, you know, uh, that, that God, he, he, he would say, God honors decisions. If we live right and we make those decisions in prayer, God will honor decisions. Like even if, even if we're not sure they're the right decision, like God, 
God will honor them if we're living right and we're, we're praying about those things. And so uh, how important it is to be led by him and to have that built in guide in our life, that built in GPS system, if you will, when we walk in integrity. Uh, third, we will have a constant peace when we when we walk in integrity. Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our heart and our mind. So let me just give you a couple of keys to walking in integrity uh, before we close out today. First, we have to choose humility. We have to choose humility. If we're going to walk in integrity, we have to choose uh, humility. Um, one of the great one of the great challenges for all of us, I think, is is the belief that we can handle things on our own and, and in our own power. Um, if if you need directions, for God's sake, ask somebody for directions. Right. Um, and I, I think I've heard. Tyra preached that message several times when we've been on the road, right? And it would seem we were a little lost. I'm not asking for directions. I've got this. I've got this, right? Uh, now, if you need directions, ask for directions. Listen, do you know that God, God wants us to come to him? James said, if any of you lack wisdom, ask of God. Like, how many times do we try to navigate through this life in our own power, in our own strength, in our own wisdom, and, and never take time to ask God where, what we should do according to His plan, right? Um, Think about how crazy that is. We talked to we talked to Aunt So and So. We talked to the friend down the hall, our roommates, and we never even talked to God about it. I think he's a lot more qualified, right? But we have to walk with the humility, and if we are walking with integrity of heart, there is nothing we can't come and ask of him, right? And 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 he will he will help us. Um, our sinful nature, um, our, our sinful nature will many times keep us living in pride. But Proverbs 16 tells us pride goes before destruction. And 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, if you don't want to be outwitted, beware of Satan's schemes. Um, and so humble yourself, 1 Peter reminds us, Humble yourself in the sight of God. Be alert and sober minded. The devil prowls around like a roaring like lion seeking someone to, to devour. Resist him and stand firm in the faith. Humility lets you hide God's word in your heart as a strong defense, as a strong defense uh, against the enemy and will help you have direction when life seems uh, confusing. Secondly, consider the consequences uh, when, you face, when you face temptation. The Bible is clear that we should pray about all things, but the, the, but the reality is this. I believe that God has given us sort of this inward compass that uh, though we should pray about all things, there's probably some things we don't even have to pray about. Right. When it comes to decision making, when it comes to direction in our, in our life. And, I, and I'll sort of close with this. Um, um, I had a former youth pastor that uh, said this to us all the time. And I think it's good advice for us as adults as well when it comes to integrity. It's certainly good advice for us to give to our students. Uh, we give it to our kids. Um, but, but when it comes to decisions, when it comes to temptation, uh, do you think this is wrong? Do you think this is wrong? You know, is this, is this wrong? Here, here's a great rule of thumb. If there's a question, there's no question. Like, if there is a question, there's no question. All right, so that means that if you have to ask yourself, is this wrong? Just don't do it. Like, it's probably, it's, there's probably a reason that the answer isn't just coming quickly to you, right? If there's a question, there's no question. So when you're in, when you're talking to teens or when you're going through something and you're sitting there and I don't know if I should do this or not, the answer is probably no. Right. Um, Andy Stanley sort of sort of mentioned that in, in his book, the greatest or the best question ever, when he said he thought the best question ever is, is this a wise thing to do? And he said so much of life uh, or so many of life's tough decisions would be made easy if we would just take time and ask ourselves is this a wise thing to do? 
Uh, and, and certainly we can ask that as a matter of prayer as well. But, but if we want to walk in integrity, if we want to walk in integrity and in, by walking in integrity, we want to have God direct our paths. Just ask yourself, is this a wise thing to do? You're considering the ramifications of the decision you're about to make. And if we take time to ask that question, we can probably answer it for ourselves. And if not, the Holy Spirit will help us to answer the question. No, this is absolutely stupid. Right. Don't do this. Uh, so if there's a question, there's no question. Let me let me pray for you and we'll go. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your word truly is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help us, Lord, to walk with integrity, because when we walk with integrity, we find your direction. We find you making our path straight at every turn, and we thank you for that. Uh, we just ask you as we enter into this CEU season that you will help us, Lord, uh, to find the principles that will help us to have direction in life. We love you and thank you for it in your name. Amen.